Hey guys, I just arrived at the hotel and I just realized that I messed up a little bit. So last time I did a vlog, I forgot my stack mat timer. So I couldn't really practice properly without it. So this time I was like, okay, don't forget anything. Make sure you have everything you need. I got my timer, I got all my cubes, except for my main two by two. I was at home, I was gonna drive down soon. So I was like, okay, I might as well just practice some two by two. And I forgot the thing. Luckily, I have my backup cube, which is the same cube. So here it is. It's also the YJ MGC Elite, uh, the Nova version. It's basically the exact same as my main. It's like, it catches a little bit more for some reason. I don't know why. But overall, it's still a pretty good cube. So yeah, it's pretty lucky that I have that packed. And hopefully I don't do too bad. I did, however, pack a blindfold. And you might be thinking, okay, he's finally doing three blind. Yeah, about that. I still haven't learned it. Okay, I'm lazy. I will learn it soon though, I promise. But this blindfold is for doing two blind. Or it's not two blind, it's two by two with a blindfold. So I'm just doing the solve blindfolded. It would actually be the very first round of the competition. So I'm gonna be a bit nervous. Uh, hopefully I don't embarrass myself too much. So this comp is called Don't Lock Up Lock Garvin. Um, it's a huge comp. I'm really excited for it. Two day comp, there's about 150 competitors and there's even multiple stages. There's a blue and a red stage. So it's just like a championships. So all the events on the first day is two by two, four by four, five by five, mega minx, clock and one handed. And on the second day is three by three, skew, pyraminx, which I still suck at, so I'm not doing it. And square one, which I don't have. So this might be a bit surprising, but the event that I was practicing the most for this competition is five by five. I've done about 200 solves over the past week because I'm obsessed with it. I really enjoy it. This is my first time competing in five by five. So hopefully I do pretty well. And final thing, this is my first proper vlog while being sponsored by Speedcube Shop. The link to Speedcube Shop's website is in the description. Go check it out. They have everything you need for speedcubing. And if you're buying anything, you can use code Scooch for a 5% discount. I think it's a great code. It's short, it's simple. Uh, it's symmetrical, kind of. So yeah, go check out Speak Up Shop. They're amazing. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Let's start practicing. All right, it's enough practicing for now. Hope I do well in the comp. And yeah, so excited. I'll see you there. Before going on to the first event, a few weeks ago, Killian said he can do a 2x2 two two to 5x5 five five relay faster than I can solve a 5x5. Five five. So we did a race. Wait, is that the actual scramble? Oh, it's such, it's such good EG as well. I don't know EG. I don't know EG, so... You went at like two. Well, we're timing it anyway. Yeah. I gotta go watch that. I need to You're bad. No, I just... That's not bad. You're bad. After that, I started practicing the first event, which is 2 by 2 which I'm doing with a blindfold, because why not? So when Rami Spahi did this, he was apparently told not to do it again. So I asked a few delegates if I'm allowed to do it, and they said I can, as long as I don't attract too much attention. To be honest, I was a bit nervous, as there's a good chance I'd DNF the average, especially because I'm using my backup cube. Luckily, this first scramble was really nice, and I got a 1.44 blindfolded world record. Even though literally nobody does this, but still, world record, yay. The second scramble was alright, I got a 1.74. On the third solve, I did a nice cancellation. It could have been quite fast, but I locked up a bit and got a 1.82. But then, this is where disaster struck. So, on the fourth solve, there's a 4 move EG2 phase, but unfortunately, I don't know full AUF prediction for EG2. I know a few, but I didn't know it for this case. So here I have two options. The safer option, do the EG2 solution and just hope it skips AUF. And if it doesn't, whatever, it's not a DNF, just a plus two. Or option B, try to do a much harder CLL solution, which I can't predict AUF for. I went for option B, the harder option, because I have dignity, okay? I have integrity. I'm not just gonna bail out and sell for a plus two. I will do whatever it takes to get a success on this solve. What am I doing? 
I deserve to be an F up. So yeah, I ended up one looking correctly, but messing up the execution and the part where you put on the blindfold. Moving on, the fifth scramble wasn't too bad, but I knew I could get a pretty good average, so I got kind of nervous. Hi. Okay, so two blinds uh, went okay. I got 194, um, which is fine. It could have been a lot better, but it's fine. I think that's world record. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, this is Rian. He's the organizer of the comp. What's the comp called? Don't lock up, lock up. Uh, How long did it take you to come up with that? We have like one name in mind for quite a while. And then like, I was on the card journey home from school one day. And I was like, don't choke. Lock the term. Next up is 4x4. I wanted to break my PR average of 48, but I knew it was unlikely as I haven't been practicing it too much. Somehow this happened during my first solve. I have no idea what happens there, but anyway, that was a 48, which was a good start. My turning wasn't great on the next few solves. I got a 52, then a 51 with like an 11 second last layer. That's plus two. And then a 50 with OL parity. This last solve is actually kind of insane. I get double parity but I still almost get my PR single. It's a 45.48, which is 0.3 off PR. This might be my best solve ever with double parity, even at home. Also, the lights on the ceiling are really bright, which reflects on the timer. So that's why you see me take a second to see the time. Yeah, 4 before I did okay. I got 50.10. I got a 45 with double parity, which is really good. Next is one handed. This actually might've been my favorite event of the comp because I literally don't care about it. It's so chill. There's no stress at all, no comp nerves or anything. Just sit back, relax, and turn the key with one hand. First solved is a 29. Then I get a 27, which is actually not too bad. Third solve is a 30, and I even mess up the this is a bad time timer stop. Then I get a 29 with this epic AUF. On the final solve, I mess up OLL, and after recovering, I mess up PLL as well. Time limit. Three minutes. Might as well finish this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> With a 29.91 average, I somehow qualified for finals, so stick around for some more high quality OH solves. Next up is 5x5 round 1. 5x5 is the event I've been practicing the most by far, and here's why. You may know that a while ago, I made a video of me solving a 5x5 without any tutorial. And since then, I've done about 10 more solves on it. That was until I went on holidays for a few days. It was very sunny and I don't really like the sun. So I spent most of the days practicing, especially 5x5. Almost every cuber I know does 5x5 and I didn't. I was feeling left out, so I practiced 5x5 like crazy. I went from 10 lifetime 5x5 solves to over 200, from averaging 3 minutes to 2.30 to 2.15, and finally, sub two minutes. In conclusion, I've come to really like 5x5. My PB single going into the comp was 1 minute 42, but then while warming up, I somehow got a 1 minute 34, which was insane. My biggest goal in this comp is to make 5x5 finals, and I knew I had to solve well to qualify. On the first solve, I got just over two minutes, which is okay, but I knew I could do better. And then on the second solve, this happened. Well done. For some reason, I continued to solve incredibly for my standards. I got a 147 and then a 149. At this point, I knew I qualified for finals and secured my biggest goal of the comp, so I was really happy. But then, on the last solve, I got another 147, finishing with an average of 147.95 which is overall PB average. This was absolutely crazy. I was not expecting to do that at all. Next is Megaminx, and I've actually been practicing Megaminx a lot at home. Just kidding. Next is Clock, which I actually did practice a bit, but still not that much. First solve is a 15, then a 17. Third solve is a 12, which is a little better. But then this is where something really sad happens. I've never said this on this channel before, but I've been going for a clock world record. What? No, not the fastest single or average records. Those are way too hard for me. I've been going for the longest current success streak. This means out of everyone who are currently on a success streak, so a streak of solves where you don't DNF, it's whoever has the longest. 
not the longest ever, just the longest right now. So as you may know, clock is quite infamous for the way it's very easy to get a DNF. But after doing a few official averages, I realized that I never DNF'd yet. So I thought, okay, let's keep going with this. I don't really care about clock anyway, so I might as well. So for my last few competitions, I went a bit safer with myself while still trying to get decent enough times. Eventually, I became joint second in the world for current success streak. But then on the fourth clock solve of don't block up block carbon, this happened. Yep. So, yeah, I pushed a pin down during inspection, which is an instant DNF. I was so annoyed because this is probably the lamest, most boring way I could have ended my success streak. I wish it was something like me thinking it solved at first, but then the judge reveals the other side wasn't solved. Then I would like stand up and do a crazy, angry reaction or something. But nope, pushing a pin down during inspection. I hate this event. On the final solve, I was just so annoyed at myself and I accidentally DNF'd my average, but I didn't really care. Honestly, it's kind of fitting that I DNF'd the average after what just happened. This actually does have a silver lining as now I don't have to worry about DNFing as much and I can actually try get fast times now. Watch out, Jacob. Anyway, in this same round, Namoon got double Mongolian NR. Also, Rian and Sean both got close to Irish NR average. More on these three later. Next is one-handed finals, and I'm not even going to show all the solves, they're so bad. This solve here is really slow, so I tried doing end moves for the first time. Like, I, I have no idea how they do it. And this was the last and best solve of the average. <laughs> That was actually a, yeah, yeah, obviously. And I finished with a 34 average. World record? Next is 4x4 finals and something quite funny happens in this round. My first few solves are normal. I got a 50 on the first one, then a 45, which was 0 0.4 off PR. Then a 50. And a 55. Some pretty average solves so far, but then this happened. Dude, it's still going. What the? It's still coming. It's still coming. <laughs> What? Yeah, it's, it's, broken, it's broken, it's broken, it's broken. Yeah. Yeah. Extra. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, it's just... You probably get an extra for that, for a time run. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I get an extra for time run malfunction. And for some reason on the extra solve, we use the same timer. <laughs> oh my god. What? Wait, what the hell? <laughs> I think that was like, that would have been my best solve as well. My timer didn't start. <laughs> Is this the same timer? Wait, that's yeah. the same timer that wasn't starting. Yeah. Like, Why did we use the same timer? Wait, no, it didn't start. <laughs> we used the same timer for some reason. Why? So I had to get a second extra, and then this happens. That's my PR, I think. Oh, nice. Just so dumb. I think that's my PR. Let's go. I wonder how many people have gotten PR single on an E2 before. Surely it can't be that many. I finished with an average of 48.62, which is 0.25 off PR. I kind of wanted to get PR average, but I was still happy as I haven't got sub 50 average in a while. So next is clock finals. And as I DNF first round, I was scrambling for this round. And oh my god, this might be the craziest round I've ever witnessed in a Cuban competition. So first of all, Namoon gets double NR again, with a 6.2 average and an even better sub-5 single. Also, Rian gets Irish national record average of 5.91. This took away the NR from Sean, who's previously been the holder of the record since 2019. But then, about 2 minutes later, Sean takes back the NR with an average of 5.90, beating Rian by 0.01. So yeah, that was absolutely insane. And next is 5x5 finals and I went into god mode this round. I don't know how, it might have been all the hype and adrenaline from the clock round, but I was solving really well. A crazy 141 was followed by an unfortunate 157. But then on the third solve, I get another 141. Before this competition, I've never gotten a 141. And then I somehow get two in one official average. Solve four is a 154 and the final solve is a 144. 
I just got overall PB average again, an average of 1 minute 46.74. My biggest focus for this comp is 5 by 5 and I got back to back PB averages, so I was super happy. The final event of day 1 is 202 finals. Improving NR would be nice, but I wasn't feeling too confident with my backup cube, so I was just hoping for decent scrambles. The first scramble was really good, but I lock up and get a 1.74. Second solve is also quite lucky, and I get a 210. Third scramble is kinda trash, I do a solution with a pretty bad EG2 and get a 207. At this point the average is dead, but leading up to this round I had a streak of 8 sub 2 averages and I didn't want to ruin it. And then I got this on the 4th solve. So I would never celebrate a 1.7, but I was genuinely afraid that I would lose my sub 2 streak, so I was really relieved. Here's another angle of Sol 4, this is taken by Seb who actually recorded the whole average, so it would have been nice to get an R, but it was not meant to be this time. The final scramble was bad, and I did the same garbage EG2 I did in the third solve, and this happened. <laughs> So yeah, a plus 2 the final solve, but I wasn't too fussed about it though because the average wasn't great anyway. I finished with an average of 1.97, which means I got a better average with a blindfold. Well, looks like I found my new method. Alright, so on day 1 I got a world record, even though literally only one other person has attempted this. But I also smashed my goal of doing well in 5x5 by getting overall PB average twice in a row. A successful day if you ask me, now it's time to see if day 2 can match the successfulness of day 1. Spoiler alert. The first event of day 2 is 3x3 round 1. Going into this comp I've been averaging like low 10 seconds, so I was feeling pretty confident. On the first solve I- Oh god that's not sorry. I got a 14. Okay, no need to panic. Whenever you get a bad solve you just forget about it, move on, and stay focused on the next- Okay, maybe it's time to panic. Luckily, the third solve is a bit better and I get a 10 flat. At this point, I've somewhat gained my composure and with a few lucky cases, I get a 905. But then went back to being trash and I get a 12. I finished with a 12 average. Yeah, let's move on. So next is skew round one, but before I compete, something crazy happens. So this is Ronan and he's been going for skew national record for a while now. He's never gotten it yet, even though he averages way faster than it at home. So here he's done his first three solves and he's on track for NR average. Then he gets a really good scramble, which also has NR single potential, which is currently 1.97. And then this happened. No! So there he apparently did a hedge instead of a sledge and DNF'd out of NR single and average. And then he also DNF'd his average. Oh my god. So yeah, everyone was really sad about that as he deserves to get NR so much and now he can't do the next two skew rounds because he DNF'd. But hopefully he gets NR soon in another comp. Anyway, my average started with an 8 and a 7. Then I get a mid 6, which is decent. After that, I had to get an extra because the fourth scramble was in plain sight when I was walking to the table. The extra scramble wasn't good and I get a high 7. And finally, I get a 10. After that, we had lunch and just when the break was finishing up, the delegates played the countdown music, which was pretty funny. What? So after a terrible start to the day, things finally picked up a little bit in skew round 2. Okay, except for this first solve. This was awful. Then on the second solve, I get a 512, which is really nice. But then on the third solve, this happened. No. Okay, wait a second. I averaged seven seconds on skew, and now I have multiple two second solves in comp. This ain't right. I'm pretty sure I don't even have a sub three at home, so to get two of them in comp is so stupid. On the fourth solve, I locked up a lot and got a seven. And right before my 5th solve, William, who's the national record holder, he was solving on the other stage and he improved his NR average, bringing it down to 340, which is insane. His final solve was really close to a plus 2, so they had to wait for a delegate to confirm it solved, and this was the reaction. Anyway, on my final solve, I got a mid 5, which actually got me PR average of 6.06. .06. I think it's safe to say these scrambles were a lot better than the first round. Next is 3x3, three three, round 2. For some reason, the first solve didn't record, but it was a 9.6. On the second solve, I choked so bad. I choked so bad. The third solve was going really well. I was on PLL at around 7 seconds and... 
Okay, let me explain what happened here. So I got this really good OLL and I also noticed that because these are matching and this is opposite, all the corners will be solved. Then when I did the OLL, it gave me this. So big bar facing me and I know the corners are solved and then I dropped the cube. You stupid. The fourth solve had really nice FTL and I got an 8.64. Fifth solve was really lucky and again an 11. I finished with an average of 11.09, which is better than round one, but still kind of trash. Hopefully it goes a lot better in finals. Next is square one, which I don't do, but this is Richard who's really good at squad. And after months of grinding, he finally gets national record average in finals. Skew finals is next and these scrambles were horrendous. So at the end of a skew solve, you either get a U perm, H perm or Z perm. U and H are pretty good, but then Z perm is like the devil of skew. I got a Z perm in my first two solves, which is so rare. And the average started with two sevens. Surely I can't get three Z perms and oh God damn it. On the fourth solve, I finally got a U perm and got a six. Then another U perm on the last solve and another six. I finished with an average of 7.42. Yeah, I'm putting all the blame on the Z-perms. It's time for 3x3 finals. On the first solve, I got a 9.24 with a nice F-perm, which is a great start. Second solve had a lot of pauses and I got a 13. After that, I got the same scramble as the last solve, but it turned out that the last solve, I got the third scramble. So for my third solve, I just did the second scramble. This solve had a few lockups and I got an 11. This fourth solve was actually kind of cracked, so I'll show the whole thing. It ended with an E-perm, which I'm normally really bad at doing, but I executed it really well here. And finally, I finish off the comp with another nice solve. So sweaty. <laughs> so in 3x3 finals, I got an average of 10.07, which is way better than the other two rounds. Like I was just so inconsistent the whole day. I was happy to actually get a decent average, even though it probably should have been sub 10. So 2x2 is the only event I podiumed in, so no surprises there. Good job to CJ and Richard for also podiuming, as well as everyone else who podiumed, and to everyone who was at the competition. Um, the only PRs I improved in was 4x4 single and skew average, uh, which is kind of understandable. I mean, I've barely been practicing most of the events, but I'm just really happy that I did so well in 5x5. Big congrats again to Namoon, uh, Richard, William, Sean, and Rian, kind of, uh, for their national records. A lot of NRs in one comp, and it just made it so exciting. So that's the end of the vlog. Make sure to check out Speaking Shop in the description below. Use code SCOOCH for 5% off any orders. Also, I have some very big videos coming up, so subscribe if you want to see what I'm currently working on. Uh, it'll all be out in about three or four weeks time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.